Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, thanks for clicking on the video. If you're new here, please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoy this content and find it useful. I did have a video on taking uh, cuttings all lined up, so uh, how to take them, um, how to treat them, how to store them, how to propagate them. Fortunately, I ran over my phone and we're no longer in winter, so I can't take cuttings anymore. If I can salvage that footage later on, I will attempt to make the video. But anyway, regardless, um, yeah, I ran over my phone and lost pretty much everything, phone numbers, all that sort of thing. Uh, so now, instead of the cutting video, I'll be running through uh, overlap and what potential problems it can cause in the vineyard and, um, uh, you know, whether or not you wish to uh, have overlap or go through and find a way to minimise overlap. And uh, with overlap, of course, I'm talking about canes overlapping. Um, so you, you select your canes in winter and uh, roll them onto the wire and tie them down. And once you've done that, sometimes they, they overlap each other. Um, so here we go, I'll run through quickly what overlap is, what it can do and all that sort of thing. So along these, there's quite a lot of overlap. Uh, as you can see here. Now what potential problems it can cause is congestion. So here, right now it's not so bad, but when these two canes grow up, if you can imagine them uh, completely grown up and the big basal leaves, so the leaves at the base are always the bigger ones, um, and this is where a lot of uh, disease issues can potentially arise. So if you imagine these basal leaves being there, it reduces the airflow that's able to move through the canopy. It also reduces the spray penetration that's able to get through. So a lot of the time you miss the backside of the cane. So if I'm spraying here, and the basal leaves sort of twist this way, uh, because of the wind and the water pressure, then I'm unable to get the base of the cane behind it. I'm unable to get the base of this cane just here. And uh, it's the same with the wind. It stays wetter in that area for longer. It increases humidity slightly. So all that is a great environment for fungal disease to spring up, uh, like downy and powdery, uh, are, are two of the major concerns here in Tasmania. And um, you know, this is a good environment for those, uh, those sorts of diseases to thrive. But um, what you can do is come through and eliminate the pore of the shoot. So here, here they're both roughly the same. So, but one's growing underneath and sort of twisting up towards the light. So in this case, I'd just remove that one altogether and leave the one upright. And here we've got a similar situation. We've got two shoots. They're both roughly the same. They're both kind of growing in a shit spot or an average crappy spot, so I'll also remove one of these guys. Maybe even the second one in this case because it's, it's sort of twisting up towards this one. I'll remove that as well. It is disheartening to remove any shoots because every shoot you do remove is two bunches that you're losing, um, which is fine if you're producing your own fruit and you're aiming for a small premium crop. But if you're selling your fruit, you don't necessarily want to get rid of pieces of your crop, big sections of your crop by, by knocking your buds off. So again, it is disheartening, but maybe necessary because if you don't do it now and act on it now, then potentially you could lose uh, a lot more crop uh, due to pest and disease because the, uh, the disease is gonna spread to the entire vine and, and, and you know, take out bigger sections. So kind of necessary to go through. The earlier the better because it, it's, it's really easy to remove the buds at this stage. It's just sort of a finger flick. Whereas when they're a bit taller, you know, disease, potential disease issues may have already arrived. You're a bit too late when it comes to removing the shoots to avoid disease. Also, they're harder to remove. When they start to lignify, they're harder to break off. Um, so you're better off to do it now. And uh, also in the crowns, sitting in the crowns, there's not a great deal of growth in these crowns. They actually look quite good. There's a double butter there. Uh, with a double butter, it always pays to knock one off. So a bit more of a congestion spot here. So I'll remove this guy. 
ground here are really, really open, so that's, that's one, one benefit. But ordinarily, you'd remove some of the growth, growth from the grounds as well. Uh, here's, here's an example of um, too, too much growth in the crown. Uh, we've got a lot of little basal buds here, or a lot of little buds here that weren't necessarily meant to be left. So you could go through and remove those guys. Take these guys at the back off, and this one down here. These guys, that'll just open it up a bit. Uh, we've left the shoots that were intended to be left in the first place. There's uh, plenty of potential for replacement canes next year. Um, when it comes to pruning, we've got three on this side down pretty low. We've got uh, another two here, and, and this one potentially, and this one. So there's plenty of growth there to, to replay shoots next year. <clears throat> um, it even allows for the potential risk of those shoots being bumped off later on or some of those shoots being bumped off later on. Yeah, we've got more than enough to compensate for that. Anyway, I'm rambling on a little bit. This video is about overlap and whether or not you wish to keep it or, or go through a thin my suggestion if you're going to thin it is to go through early and thin it because it's easier to flick off, it's more um, cost effective. If you're paying somebody to go through and, and thin it, it's, it's better to do it early than late. Also if you do it later, the problem may have already occurred that you're getting disease. So yep, early is best, but if you choose to leave them, um, maybe slow down, increase uh, or decrease your droplet size. If you've got bigger droplets, um, just to help with penetration a little bit more, maybe introduce a good wetting agent, a good wetter and penetrant. You can buy a product that's uh, penetrant as well as a wetter in one. Um, definitely add that if you're going to keep the shoots. That'll help uh, with penetration and the vine getting in, or, or the, the spray penetrating into the canopy. So that'll, <clears throat> if you use a wetting agent, um, there's a product here in Tasmania that we use called Wetsit. I can't remember what company it's it's made by, but that particular product uh, I would use and, and have used when I've had a really dense canopy, which effectively is the same thing as having overlap. You now it creates the same sort of issues, where it's a really vigorous site, thick canes, big basal leaves, um, and hard to penetrate into with the spray. So using a product like Wetsit, which is a wetter and penetrant in one, that really, really helps with uh, getting the chemical inside where it needs to be and um, sort of bypassing the fact that there's a thicker, denser canopy there. Uh, Airflow problems you're not going to be able to correct if you decide to keep the, the double butters or the overlap. Airflow is a problem that you're going to have to contend with and um, you know moisture sitting in those spots and, and taking longer to dry out but if it's a wet season anyway then you can't really avoid that but yeah if you are going to thin it again just go through early knock off the buds and it could potentially be a pretty good idea to go through and thin it uh, especially if you're keeping your crop because the the risk of getting disease and potentially losing more because it's harder to get on top of because the disease is harder to combat with the denser canopy um, that's created by overlapping canes. So yeah, in a nutshell, either thin, or if you choose not to thin, I suggest using a good wetter and penetrant and um, slowing down, just really making sure that you double check. Even putting a water sensitive card inside the canopies where there is double butters just to check on your penetration and coverage and make sure that it is adequate. But yeah, I mean if you can if you can solve the problems by putting your chemicals on, uh, curatives or preventatives uh, on and, and making sure that you're getting adequate uh, coverage and penetration then you know, it's not really necessarily an issue. So. Anyway, I hope this has helped you guys out and um, I've enjoyed having a chat about it and I hope you have a great day 
and please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoy this content and or found this useful or helpful because there's plenty more and there will be plenty more to come all right thanks guys have a great day and see you on the next video